What's going on everybody? Alex here with Nick and Zana Landscape. In today's video, we're gonna be converting an old seven foot Meyer truck snow plow or Jeep snow plow onto our Bobcat MT85. We gotta do some welding, we gotta do a little bit of hydraulic line work, but other than that, it is pretty straightforward. So, wanted to bring you guys along with us today and show you what it takes. All right, so this is what we're working with over here to the left. You can see the plow. It's a decent plow, not rusty or anything like that, and it's got a poly front, so. A pretty good plow and then our MT85 here so we've got to do a little cutting on the plow itself to get ready to mount it up to the plate but uh, then we just got to make some brackets and do some welds and get it attached to the plate and then redo the hydraulic lines. So first thing we got to do here is cut these ears off this is how it would attach to the truck bracket but we don't need those anymore so just cut those clean off right there. And then there was a chain connected right there that we got rid of. So we'll get rid of those. And then we're basically gonna beef up this plate a little bit. And then we'll weld a few solid welds across here, attaching this to the plate. And then we're gonna build a little bit of bracketing coming off of the front of the A-frame going up over towards the plate. So pretty straightforward on that. And we're just gonna use some square tubing.
that installed. All right guys, so that's it for the welding. That's where we're gonna leave it. Got it all welded up there pretty tight. Everything looks good there. So we just gotta do the hydraulic lines basically. We'll take those hydraulic lines that used to go to the pump and we'll make those go into here. So don't have that stuff yet. Probably be a couple days for me and a couple seconds for you guys, but that's the next step. Get these hydraulic lines done and get everything painted up and that'll be a wrap. Looks good, very rigid, stiff. So I like it. We basically just mock the angles on those top ones with the angles of the A-frame on the bottom ones. So turned out nice. I'm very happy with it. Lasts us a long time. Alright guys, so we got the hydraulic lines. Got them put on. We also got everything painted and uh, test it as well here too. So we know we are all good to go, but I wanna show you guys what I did and then we'll show you everything functioning. So uh, we got this painted up, Nick got all that done. Uh, looks good, put as many coats as we can on there to try to protect it as much as possible from the rust and the salt and things, but uh, there's only so much you can do without powder coating. So get as thick of a coat as paint as possible on this kind of stuff and uh, just clean it and keep up with it, touch up paint when you need to. But uh, basically all we did here was take all of the fittings and everything out of this cylinder. So there was a line going down into a 90 degree fitting. We removed the line, then we removed the fitting Took that fitting with us and made sure that our thread here on our new line matched that old fitting. So that will be your first step. Whatever goes into your cylinder, take that with you when you get your hydraulic lines made. And make sure that's the same thread. So get, uh, and it was a 90 going down into there, but there's no need for that. So we went straight. Uh, the less bends you have in hydraulic lines, the better. So we went with a straight line here and we went with the smallest line that we can. So you wanna do that because you don't want a lot of flow going to these. With the little Bobcat, it's not as important, but if you're doing this for a full size skid steer, you'll see very quickly if you run it this way that you're throwing way too much fluid into these cylinders way too fast and the plow will be a little jerky. So you wanna go with as small of line as possible so you're allowing the least amount of fluid at a time going into these cylinders. So get uh, same thread down there, get a small line, and then basically just run it right up to a coupling, which this case we use 90s, you don't have to. Use whatever you can get your hands on, whatever works um, for a snow plow, and 90 might be better for a lot of attachments, 90s are better, but uh, straight ones will work too. So very simple, match your thread, get a small line, run it up to a coupling. Same thing on the other side. Match your thread, small line, 
running up to your other coupling. Doesn't matter which side goes to where. Um, the only thing that that will change is, so for the MT, you push this to have your hydraulic flow go one way, and you push this way to have your hydraulic flow go the other way. So the only thing that swapping those couplings would do, and this goes for any hydraulic attachment, uh, if you swap your couplings, the only thing that it's gonna do is, you know, say you have your male on top right now, you pull it this way, that's gonna turn it right. If you would swap those two lines and then you go the same way, it's gonna go left. So for whatever reason, when you set yours up, if you want, you know, if it's going left when you pull it down and you want it to go right, just switch your lines down there. So uh, pretty simple setup, pretty cheap, really. Uh, not a lot you have to do. On a full-size skid, you can put some inline regulators to regulate your flow so your plow's not moving side to side too fast. But again, with this little Bobcat, uh, there's not that much hydraulic flow. So it was no problem to uh, just have them go straight to the coupling. So fire it up here and show you guys what it looks like. So that's what we got. As you can see, I tried moving it as uh, slow as I could and then I moved it as fast as I could. So I uh, got pretty good control. I think this is about perfect. Wouldn't want it too much faster than that or too much slower than that. So it actually worked out really good with this, but we've done this in the past uh, with full size skid and the plow moves side to side way too fast. So you may want to look into a regulator uh, if you're doing full size skid. But again, for these small skids uh, with low hydraulic pressure, this works really good. The only thing I want to do from here is uh, we're going to do some loops or something down here to guide these hydraulic lines to make it to where they look pretty and they're going over there clean, not just flopping around loosely like this. But uh, for now, that's what we got. And we actually have a major snowstorm coming. I'm shooting this video right now. What is today? It's Sunday. This part of it is at least. Sunday, January 30th. And on... It's gonna make it February 2nd, I think. February 2nd and February 3rd, we're supposed to be getting smacked with a huge snowstorm. So, perfect time to get this thing built. Uh, we might actually get to use it within the next couple days. So, so stay tuned. We're gonna be doing our snow setup video as well. We haven't done one of those in a couple years and everything has pretty much changed. So, um, wanna get that updated uh, just for our records kinda so we can look back on that kind of thing. But um, we're gonna be doing that video here within the next couple days. So I'm gonna get this one posted today, hopefully. And and then uh, Monday or Tuesday we'll come out with the setup video and then hopefully the video after that will be of a major snowstorm. So. Alright guys, so that's all we got for this one. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and if you're not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.